just just gutted Luke Plato and that Premier League final to be honest because I was four <laughs> four legs away from creating incredible history. But I don't think Phil gets the real credit he deserves, Phil Taylor. You know, I think I've played a fantastic tournament. What's my tournament average? Probably 102. He's done 104 plus five times. But he said before that he said his scoring was better than mine this tournament. I think that was wrong. I think my scoring was better this tournament than him. Um, and I knew I could rely on that. I knew my scoring would, would beat him. Luke, congratulations. What a week it's been. Just sum up where this night ranks in your career. Well, it's definitely up in the second best night of my life, to be honest. Uh, I've, you know, always the world will be the number one. That, that would never, um, you know, that would never take place. But it, what, the way I felt when I won it, it felt really, really close to me. I didn't expect it to mean so much to me. But the way I played this week, I thought, you know, I think I deserve this. And, you know, you don't always get what you deserve in sport. Sometimes it doesn't go your way. But 500 averages on the trot. You know, no one can say that I didn't deserve to win this, to be honest. And I had to work incredibly hard and beat some great players to do it. Game of two halves. You could have been 9-1 up, but mm. in the second half of the game, Michael has put you under all kinds of pressure. How have you come through that moment when he's thrown everything at you? Yeah, I thought a fair... You know, I could have been about 13-7 up in a way. I think there was a couple of missed opportunities. But when you're in big finals, sometimes... You miss them opportunities and you're trying too hard, I don't know, but my doubling was, you know, good at very good at times. I can't be too critical. But you know, the way Michael come back I was not unexpected, but I felt like I've watched a few of his games this week and I felt like when he was putting the pressure he was very vulnerable. So tonight he wasn't. You know, I think every time he had one I'm thinking, please well, you're thinking, come on, you know, and he's hitting triple nine, triple nine. His triple nine, his cover shots tonight were absolutely fantastic, and you know that's what kept him in the game. To be honest, maybe if they weren't as good, I would have won a lot, lot clearer. But you know, putting a fantastic performance, just unfortunate at the end. There, a few boos and whistles that kind of you don't really want to at the end. But I tried to stop it, tell him to stop. But there's nothing you can do about that. To be honest, they're going to have their own opinion. But for me, I'm not used to having the crowd on my side. So you know, as a whole, before that happened, it was nice to have the crowd wanting me to win. Not many people dominate Michael Van Gerwen, but you're now eight in a row against him in some big, big games as well. How have you found the way to just deal with him the way you are? I, I think I'll just play my own game and don't play the player. If you play the player, you know, the name, you may try too hard to beat him. So for me, I think the, the winning record I've got, I just play my own game against him. I love playing against him. He's a fantastic, you know, talent and player and... You know, when we had that period between 2012, 13 to 2019, it was just it was just unbelievable to us. No one could beat him. I don't think he'll ever find that form again. You know, I don't think that's that's there anymore. But he's still a player to beat. He's still going to win many major titles in the future. You know, for, but for me, just to win this and, and never have to worry about having to do it again, because obviously I want to win it again. I want to win it many times. But to know that's on my CV for the rest of my life, it's uh, it's a dream come true. Huge congratulations. Thank you, Phil. Nick, there were a lot of points in that game where you had a two or three leg buffer and every time Michael broke, you broke him back and kept that buffer. How important was it to sort of keep him at arm's length throughout that period? Yeah, I think that was, you know, when I couldn't take that big lead against him, that was what I was going to the break every time I was thinking, just keep him at arm's length, you know, don't let him get in front of you. Maybe if he gets in front of you, he might find that confidence and that belief that he can beat you. Uh, so I thought, just keep him away, you know, don't let him get close to you. Um, but I think he did in the end, 16-15, am I right? Yeah, so he did get close. Um, you know, but he, his, his cover shot tonight was absolutely unbelievable to us. I don't know the stats, you know, but you know, every time he hit a one, it seemed to be triple 19, triple 19, and then you know that that that's what kept him in the game. His scoring was great, but he said before that he said his scoring was better than mine this tournament. I think that was wrong. I think my scoring was better this tournament than him, um, and I knew I could rely on that. I knew my scoring would would beat him. Uh, and I think it did too much. My scoring was fantastic. My doubling was crucial in, in moments. Um, and I think, you know, that's why I was the winner in the end. It's been an incredible 12 months for yourself. How do you now reassess the goals for yourself? It's hard because, you know, obviously, for me, I was four legs away from creating a triple crown in the same year. You know, that Premier League was inspired. Look, little performance that stopped me from a triple crown in, in the same year. And, you know... I can't even begin to, to think of words of what I would have felt like if I'd have done that. But there's still goals, isn't there? Premier League I haven't won. You know, that's the only Sky Sports tournament I've not won yet. Uh, I still haven't won the European Championships, World Series finals. I'm, I still haven't won a World Series, so there's still goals for me to set. 
Um, you know, I don't want to leave this sport as a one-time world champion. I want to leave it as a two, three, four, five, whatever it may be. You know, I want to win more. So yeah, I'm still incredibly driven, and you know, moments and nights like this will, will only but drive you even more. Thank you. Congratulations. Um, Thank you. Tonight, your name, it was already amongst, because you won the World Championship, it was always amongst the greats, but tonight you've been, you've matched Phil's record of an average, a hundred mm. plus average all the way through. Uh, other seldom players have come through and won this trophy in the same year. Is the next challenge for you going to be the hunger and the, the, the continual domination? We rarely get an Englishman apart from Phil in this sport, but in other sports who do that, is that something that's somewhere inside you in your heart? You want to be that person? Yeah, I mean, first of all, you just for me, I, I sit back now and I think, I don't think Phil gets the real credit he deserves, Phil Taylor. You know, I think I've played a fantastic tournament. What's my tournament average? Probably 102. He's done 104 plus five times. I think he doesn't get that credit he deserves. You know, I know he's obviously the 16-time world champion, but... You know, the things he achieved, there will just be no one ever as good as him. I don't think I'll, I'll ever see it in my lifetime. You know, someone that will ever match the things he's, he's achieved. I, I could never imagine winning this title five times, let alone 16. And he played in an era of some great players. So that just tells you a lot about, you know, how people just don't give him the credit he deserves. And, you know, for me, like you say, I'll keep being driven by winning trophies. You know, it keeps seeing my family's face elated and the enjoyment I get from them and seeing my son, they ain't got a clue what's going on, but he's there pointing, going, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, you know, he's seeing loads of lights and he's, he's enjoying it and he don't really know what's going on with his dad, but, you know, it's lovely to have him here and all my family, you know, all that. They've travelled all the way from Newbury and, you know, four and a half hours and my friend Rob, he travelled from Ireland to come watch me as well, so... So many people that you know you don't want to let down to. Be honest, sometimes it has a little bit of extra pressure on your shoulders when you get all your family and friends come. But uh, you know, for, for nights like these, it's it's worth them being here because they get the elation of you winning as well. Thank you, for Luke. That. I'm sure you probably wouldn't want to answer this, but how can people stop Luke Humphries? Because you've got such a stranglehold on these big TV tournaments. I know you talked about the Premier League; you just missed out. But it just seems like the level that you're playing at, people aren't even coming close to you at the moment. I think probably you stopped coming because every time <laughs> you, when you first started coming, I couldn't, I've won everything. So maybe you're the, the omen I need to be here, but we had that, that chat before, didn't we? Yeah. Um, no, it's, I think any, I am beatable. Anybody can beat me in two miles. I, I don't think I'm this sort of player that no one can beat, no one can touch. You know, Michael come incredibly close there and, and James Wade come, you know, close. I know the scoreline didn't reflect it, but he come close, Bunting come close. You know, I just have that resolve in me. I think, you know, I said it many times this week that I just want to be the man that's hard to beat. You know, if you beat me, you have to play incredibly well. And, you know, if you do, then you'll beat me. But I don't see myself as that player that's unbeatable to me. I think there's many people that can beat me. But hopefully for a long time, no one can because I'll be able to pick up many, many majors. But, of course, there's going to be times where it ain't going to go my way. But I can sit here now and say, you know, eight major, eight major finals out of ten one six of them you know it's just it's just insane to boss and something that I never would have ever have dreamed of doing in the last 12 well when I walked out of here 12 months ago we were seeing people before in darts and in other sports it, it, they find it hard to keep that elite level and do all the things off the hockey you need to do to to be the very very best and manage life as well with with your family and other mm. things how, how do you find that balance in life to have your family life but also be extremely dedicated to be successful as you have been? Yeah, I don't think there's a right or wrong answer. You know, I try to just have that balance what I think's right. You know, I commit to a lot. I, I practice a lot. I dedicate myself a lot. I, you know, and many, many world champions over the years have not done as many exhibitions as I've done this year or will do this year. But when you're world champion, you want to go on and show your trophy off. You want to enjoy yourself. And all the exhibitions I do, it's it's amazing. You know, all the people, they, they're so excited to see. Uh, you know, the love I felt this year is since, you know, that that first Premier League game that I played in Wales where I felt really down. I thought no one really liked me and it, you know, it kind of hurts you because you feel like I just, not that you want to be liked, but you, you, I just don't see what I'd done wrong, to be honest. And now I feel there's a bit more love towards me and it just it just fills my heart with joy, to be honest. It feels great. It feels better than winning major titles. You know, I just want the fans to enjoy the, the you know, the, the talent that I've got and I'm trying to do and I just I just want to give the fans great great darts you know like I said to you yesterday I, I think it's a great thing that I'm here now and, and doing things like this because there's going to be players that are thinking right well I want to do this and 
you know, it was just mm-hmm. he, Phil Taylor and then Michael and then Gezi and now it's me and people will just be driven on from my, by my success, the players, and they'll want to top me over and it just it just sets a good precedent for the future for players. You know, we could have a ex- very, very exciting sport in the next two or three years and, you know, there's going to be many, many major new major winners over the next couple of years, I can assure you. And I, hopefully, you know, I've set that example to let the players believe that they can win big titles. You've talked a bit about James Wade this week and how underestimated he is. He's third on the all-time majors list with 10, and you've done six in nine months. I mean, mm. does, do you get perspective from that? Does it seem that you are closing in already mm. on being third on that list in just nine months? Can I do it this year? <laughs> I'd love to. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's obviously something that I'd love to. You know, I'd, I'd, I just I just can't see anybody toppling Phil. Of course, that's an obvious one, Michael. Probably not. Maybe maybe Luke Lilla could because he's still young and that's the chance. For me, I'm 30. I've got he's, you know I'm I'm 13 years older than him. It's probably not going to happen. But to put myself third for a good few years, it's a massive opportunity. Um, you know, I'd love to you know win as many major titles as I can. If I left the sport tomorrow, you know, I'd I'd be incredibly happy with what I've achieved. But I'm not finished yet. You know, I've got many many years available and maybe hopefully 20, and I'll try and you know win as much as I can. Put myself you know because I want to create a legacy. I want to. You know, win as many major titles as I physically can, and, and put my name up there with you know some of the greats, and you know just just doing the, them little stats that people keep telling me about how Phil's done this and you've matched him and, and done the same as what Phil's done. It's still a dream, so yeah, I'm just going to keep pushing myself, working hard, keep dreaming high, and uh, you know maybe the, the the world's my oyster if I keep working hard. It's a huge well done, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Many congratulations. Thank you. You said earlier in the week that you still have a lot more to win, and now you've added the second biggest tournament in the PDC to that on this list. Would you say this is the second best moment of your career? Definitely, it really is. It's the de- the second most, the biggest uh, moment of my career. Um, the way I felt after winning that, you know, the, the feeling I felt inside was very, very, very close to the World Championships. You know, obviously the Worlds will always be first because every time I get announced, I'll always be classed as a former or uh, reigning World Champion. This will obviously come second, so that is just something that never leaves your side. But to put this next to it, like say the second biggest, just just gutted Luke played so well in that Premier League final, to be honest, because I was four <laughs> four legs away from creating incredible history, but. You know, I'll I'll go back next year and hope I get selected next year and and play in it and try again. But you know, this is this is the second, like you say, and it is it's jubilation for me and my family. It's a you know, it's, that's why it's called the Phil Taylor Trophy. You just seen so many experiences of him winning it in such great style. To put my name on it, and you know, especially after my good mate Nathan as well, it's a you know, it's a really good blessing for myself. And you mentioned your family. You said about the positive record of having your father there mm. watching you. I have, and I think. I'm trying to think, I think he's been to. I think he missed one of my major final losses. I think it was the Premier League. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if he was there at the UK, but he's only missed one out of the, the six I've won. So, you know, he's a good omen having him there. But of course, these are moments and nights that he'll always remember. So, you know, I love my dad to bits. He's he's the reason that I am who I am, and the way I, you know, to where I can play this well. And I'll never ever, you know, take him for granted. He's the he's the best man in, in my life, to be honest. And uh, I love him to bits. And you know, that's why I always dedicate these trophies to him because I just I can see in his face how much they mean. They mean more to him than me. Um, that's why I dedicate them to him. Well played and well done. Thank you very much. Luke, congratulations. Thank you. How do the emotions tonight compare to some of the other victories? Are you getting used to this winning feeling? I don't think you can ever, uh, you know, I could sit here in, in 20 years done my 40th major victory. I don't think it gets any, you know, it's, get used to it. It's a feeling that I don't think can be beaten. When you're a dark player, this is what you dream of, winning these titles. And I think if I was to win this for the fourth, fifth time, I still think it would feel the same as it does right now. It's just jubilation. It's it's great feelings. You know, it's, it's moments that you just, as you see on the stage, you know, you feel that, that great sense of I've achieved again. And it's, you know, just words can't describe how it feels. Yeah, I've really enjoyed my, you know my week here. It's been great. Um, you know, I really really love it, and you know, it's a great tournament. The, the Winter Gardens is a special venue. Um, you know, I I can't tell you any dart player don't enjoy playing the Winter Gardens. If you do, you probably shouldn't be here because it's just such an amazing venue. That you know, everything's always great. The, the staff are great. You know, just everything about it and. Uh, you know, to, to finally win in this great um, in this great venue, it, it really means the world to me. How tense was it on stage at that time? Of course, you've both had opportunities to take 
It was very tense in the end. You know, it was very nip and tuck. I think there was a, a lot riding on that leg. If Michael would have won that and it had gone 17-16, uh, I think he would have had the throw. So, you know, you just don't know how the game pans out, really. I don't know how he missed it at double, but, you know, he gave him the opportunity at the 100 and he probably would have thought that maybe you don't take it. But as soon as I hit that 20, I thought, you know, this tops is going high or it's not going low. I'm going for it hard. As soon as that first one goes in, I'm thinking, just throw at the dart and hopefully a lovely deflection. That's all you can do when you go for a double top. You know, if you go double top, double top, hoping for a lovely deflection, it was just beautiful to be honest. I couldn't throw in it any better. And, you know, that was where you got that massive relief off me from the, the celebration. Congratulations, Robin. Thank you very much.